Hi, this is Sarah Swan and I'm the creator of Two Becoming One Healing Arts and I create videos to help people learn self-love and self-worth through the eyes of trauma using the creative arts. So since May is Mental Health Awareness Month, I thought we could talk about mental health awareness, like actual mental health issues, um, especially those that are invisible. Now, unlike physical illnesses, such as maybe you got hurt at work and you have to wear a cast, or you're disabled and all of a sudden you're in a wheelchair, or maybe you um, got a disease and have a disease and you can see that you're suffering from it, uh, a lot of mental health issues um, are kind of like, they're kind of swept under, under the rug, and um, to be honest, or maybe they're invisible and you don't even know. Like you might have people standing right next to you that are suffering from anxiety, that are suffering from depression, and you may not even know. Um, you might have someone that might be having suicidal thoughts. And um, I mean, how many times have we heard in the news or on Facebook, I know this is kind of a rant, but um, that someone has killed themselves and people are like, why did they kill themselves? Like, why didn't they ask for help? Well, it's because they, um, they were in this world where they thought maybe no one loved them, no one cared enough about them, and um, that they couldn't ask for help. So um, I think by, and of course they felt alone and invisible, and, um, but, and that no one saw them. And I think this is the issue we need to look into, um, to be able to look into other people's worlds, not just our own, because a lot of times we tend to have our own little bubble of who we are, rather than looking into who other people are. Like, how do they see the world? You know, not just how you see it. I think it's healthy to be able to see how they see the world so that we can see each other authentically rather than inauthentically and projecting our own issues onto the other people. Um, and so I wanted to create, because of this, and I think if you can, if I, if I can share my story and share what I know about these various um, invisible issues that people might suffer from, then maybe we can be more aware of it and we can pick up on it and we can help the world. This video today is about codependency. A lot of times people throw out the word codependent and they don't really understand what it means. I've had people say to me, oh, you're still codependent? Like, as in it's something you can heal overnight. You cannot, by the way. I kind of wanted to, but you cannot, unfortunately. Um, and um, I think we all don't have a great definition of it. So I wanted to share my story as a codependent and recovering love addict. So when you are codependent, it means you validate yourself outside of self um, by any means possible. Your self-worth and your self-love is based on your external means of validation. Um, what I mean by that is most people, if they're not codependent, they love themselves, they see themselves worth regardless of what other people do to them regardless of how well they achieve in school or in their job or how high up they are in their job or whether they have a family or not and a loving husband or whether they have kids. Um, but people that are codependent, you, um, you get your self-worth from anything rather than yourself. And um, it's hard, it's hard to transition because it's like you create these habits throughout your life. I'm 35 and um, these habits that I have have been creating in my brain for quite some time and um, yes, the brain can be changed because it's um, we can change the neural pathways, but um, it takes time to change those patterns. Um, so when I say validating outside of self, I mean like for me, I was a workaholic. I was a perfectionist. I was overachieving, hardworking. I was trying to be the best teacher I could. I tried to get complete straight A's. I tried to join every club possible and be the leader of those clubs if I could. Um, because for me, doing all that meant that I had self-worth and um, that I could be something in the world. But the moment that I let those things drop, all of a sudden my self-worth went from being up here 
to being down, like below. Like it was so bad. I had no self worth. Um, another way that people who are codependent um, cannot act out their codependency is by people pleasing. I was a people pleaser. Um, I would often, um, if someone had a different opinion than me, I would take their opinion rather than my own. I wouldn't even think, what do I think about this? What do I feel about it? Oh, well, this person doesn't like it, and so therefore I don't like it. Um, or let's say um, someone needed something done, I would kind of people please and do that for them or act how I thought they wanted me to act. Um, with my former husband, I, I thought that he wanted me to be a certain person, and so I dropped my authenticity to um, be who he wanted me to be. Um, he didn't even ask, but I did it because to me it felt safer. That's another thing. If you're codependent, it feels safer to do all these actions, to, um, to people please, to caretake for other people, to be that overachiever, to be that perfectionist, to be that perfect job person, to excel in this or that, or have your appearance be perfect, or have your, um, you have to have your makeup on. Um, because it feels safer because if you are doing those you feel like no one will abandon you or maybe you'll um, Be complacent and agree with someone because you don't like confrontation Because if you had a different opinion it felt unsafe because what if they abandon you? Because that is literally the question going through our heads sometimes unconsciously um, if I do X if I be myself if I don't achieve this if I am not the most perfect person in work, if I make a mistake, then therefore people might abandon me and I will be unloved and unworthy. And it's literally, and, and, it, and that's what it is, it literally, that's what it is. And to be able to change that, it takes time and effort and persistence and, um, and strong will, literally. Um, there's times in my life where I can tell that I'm posting a comment on Facebook and I'm seeking validation. I'm seeking people to like it or I'm seeking people to comment, to interact with me. And um, it upsets me actually because I'm like, why can't I just post it because I want to? Why do I have to post it so people can see me? Because sometimes I feel like if people see me, then I'm seen versus because there's also like by by thinking by doing that the opposite reaction there's also the I'm unseen and obviously feeling unseen means you might be abandoned and it and it and it's hard it's hard um, so I probably could go into more detail but I know there's other videos out there with codependency um, if you are a codependent I highly suggest Lisa Romano Ross Rogan, Rosenberg, um, to name a few, but um, yeah, so that's the end of that video, and I hope you got something from it, and um, as always, be your own lighthouse. Thank you.